Okay. There we are. Hi gang, how are you doing? Sorry I'm a little late, about five minutes late. Uh, this is Chicho, welcome to the live stream. And uh, today we're cooking lamb stew. And I had to go into uh, my OBS to reset my keys and stuff. I'm not sure it automatically reset it or something. So I was doing a little search online trying to figure out how to do this. And I think we should be live now. I hope so anyway. I'm going to pop out the chat. And let me pop out the chat. I have to grab the phone, get the authentication code. Cool. That should be live. I hope so. I hope so. Crazy. Got everything set up. Didn't check to make sure we could go live. All right away. So I'm going to wait uh, until we get a, our first little comments uh, to make sure that uh, we are streaming. It shows me streaming. A couple of people are on here right now. Okay, cool. This should be working now. That was like panic mode right at the beginning. Oh, I can't connect. I can't connect. The authentication is not working. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Anyway, we're doing another co uh, another cooking live stream. We're going to cook up some lamb stew. And today is January 18th, 2020. This is our first cooking live stream for this year. And it's the first one we've done for a number of months. Uh, it's been a while since we uh, went into the kitchen, came here and uh, did a cook right uh we did some jams and stuff uh for the summer and i really can't remember what we did last time x how are you doing right on we got uh confirmation that we're streaming we're good to go awesome awesome slight technical difficulties the first five minutes speedy gonzalez authenticating obs uh, to link up to twitch Whew. glad that worked <laughs> hope you guys are doing well <laughs> Uh, as before, we're going to wait a few minutes until people start rolling in. And um, we're doing lamb stew today. And I've loaded up some pictures and stuff like this. Uh, Splits X, how are you doing? Thank you for the loves. Lots of lots of hearts there. Awesome. Purple hearts. Yay! Yay! Um, let me show you the setup we have here, right? As before, we got our two cameras set up here, two little webcams set up here. We're going through the uh the computer cam the main camera here it's a little slow it's it's an older system i guess it's it's not the top laptop we could have got right wayfaring soul hey man good to see you uh nice air thanks i just got it this morning <laughs> i just gave myself a shave this morning i have the same air got awesome awesome i haven't been to a uh to a barber for i don't know how many years I don't know how many decades I, I can't remember I think last time maybe I went to a barber maybe I got a shave I can't I can't even remember splits how are you doing double O negative finally another cooking video yeah I've been looking forward to this man I've been looking forward to this I thought you forgot about showing us your lamb stew nice I can't wait to cook it up um, if, if you know I've been following some of my work uh, January 1st I got hit with a a bug that's been going around the West Coast and it knocked me out for two weeks I'm just coming out of it now right so I've been craving uh, initially for the first little while you, you don't feel like eating anything right I was just drinking liquids and lemon and ginger tea and stuff like this but once you start getting your energy back I was been craving hearty food and this is it this is as hearty as a uh, uh, food that sort of make to a certain degree there's a couple other dishes that i'll show you guys in the future right me neither same nice and it saves you so much money when you're cutting your hair eh? uh, done awesome awesome right um so let me show you guys uh, what we got so we got the two cameras set up again okay we got we're just going to use one pot today we're going to cook everything in this right What's up, my main man, Chicho? Riot, how are you doing? So we're going to cook things up here. Okay. We might, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> we might be, uh, let me give you this one away. We might uh, 
I got way too many veggies and stuff that we're gonna throw into this pot. So uh, we're not gonna do a double double pot, okay? We're just gonna do one pot. It should be plenty of food, right? Uh, Dante, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. And here's the second camera we got set up over here. And this is where we're gonna do all our cutting and everything, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, doing the cutting right away. I just wanna get the onions chopped up and thrown on here, right? Because the way I end up uh, doing my stews, I put some olive oil on the bottom, put it on low heat, medium heat initially, medium heat initially to kick up the temperature a little bit. And then we start throwing in the onions and I let the onions cook a little bit and then the meat on top. So I do a layered system, right? Riot, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Gilbert, T N Gilbert, how are you doing? Hey Chicho, this is my first time catching a stream. Feeling pumped, nice, nice. We almost, I almost didn't get on. I went to, I went to go live, and for some reason, I think I, I think I know why. I sort of reset my passwords on uh, on Twitch uh, last night. Um, because of a request and I didn't realize that I had to re-authenticate the OBS system to uh, to be able to connect on so I went to live stream at 12 p.m. and it wasn't doing it, it was saying the, saying the keys weren't uh, weren't connecting up they weren't authentic so I was like oh man what does that mean so I did a little search in five minutes I got my phone got the authentication code set it up boop, we're back on right I was pretty chill about 10 minutes ago now I'm all wired uh, just because I was like oh my god we got everything set up what's going on right I think I can count on one hand how many times I've been to the barber my entire life nice now I just use uh, clippers and razor yeah that's me too I use a uh, trimmer right anyway look forward to seeing what you're making today awesome uh, and this is gonna feed us for like three days right so let me show you what I got I'm gonna chop up the onions first and then I'll show you guys the other veggies that we're gonna cut up so I got some just cooking onions here right I'm gonna use at least two of these I might use three okay and I'm gonna take the bigger ones first because the bigger ones are you get more volume you chop it up you get you don't you know you don't have to peel off the skins of the little ones and chop them up right so let's put these guys here and since we're gonna do a little bit of messy work let's put this on you know what I'm gonna increase the text size on here nice nice as a lamb skeptic I'm going to enjoy a riot my first bit of advice if you're because I know a lot of people that don't like lamb okay my first bit of advice it it it's really important where you're getting your lamb from okay cooking uh, for me there's two places where we get access to lamb here one of them is BC lamb British Columbia from Canada another one's New Zealand and the way it works is the New Zealand lamb has a very lamby flavor to it uh, some people like that flavor BC lamb doesn't have that lamby flavor to it so I I don't like the lamby flavor personally um, and if you've eaten lamb you know what I mean there's a lot of people that you know you, you tell them you're cooking up lamb they're like oh no I don't like the lamb flavor and stuff like this um, I use BC lamb only I try to anyway sometimes I get New Zealand lamb when it's on sale and stuff you can't pass it up uh, because you can add the herbs and stuff and it gets rid of that lamby flavor but BC lamb it, you know you really can't taste it I just feel bad for eating <laughs> Poor people. okay on that note then I'm sorry um, I think BC BC little guys and New Zealand little guys have the same you know worth so if you feel bad about it um there really isn't a lamb substitute that i know of um, so on that front uh, more power to you man for me i love the flavor too much and my body I, like for me i require meat 
I don't eat very much of it. You'll see how much vegetables we're throwing in and how much uh, how much lamb we're putting in. It's not very much, so the, so the volume of meat we have to eat isn't that much, but my body requires meat, and everybody's diet is very different, right? Uh, I'm much more interested in your meat base cooking yeah there's uh, like the meat stuff for sure there's shish kebabs and stuff we do i still have to show you guys the shish kebab stuff and we'll do this spring right uh just to let you know i've kicked up the temperature in this to you know three out of nine it's gonna get the oil hot enough so we're gonna start throw the onions in and it'll start simmering a little bit right it starts sizzling a little bit very small overloaded with vegetables overloaded with vegetables right and I'll show you what I'm throwing in here and for this we just let's just chop them up a little bit right I'm not really breaking them down too much we're gonna cook this for a long time I like um, I like the lamb to be really soft and sort of breaking apart in my stews right I'm not looking to eat chunks of meat I'm looking to add the protein to it and uh, have the thickness the richness of it right I love lamb uh, when eating out never tried cooking it myself though uh, yeah I for me the one thing I do get in restaurants uh, in terms of lamb which which is why I don't I don't make too much of it is rack of lamb I find rack of lamb um, I haven't perfected my recipe for rat, uh, rack of lamb. Is that a pressure? No, not a pressure cooker. I do have a pressure cooker, but uh, pressure cooker I mainly use for uh, for beans, especially chickpeas and stuff. Chickpeas for sure, especially if you're making like hummus and whatnot. And some of the stews that we make, we make with uh, with chickpeas, right? This is the Bob Ross of cooking up. <laughs> happy, happy onion chunks. Mm -hmm. Happy onion chunks. I'm cooking here. Let me show you. Let me throw in the onions right now and I'll show you the lamb. I'm going to add a fair bit of onions. Okay. So there was one big one and two medium onions that we're throwing in there. And by the way, in general, when I chop up onions, when I clean them and stuff, I end up using them. Don't put onions by themselves once they're, once they're cut up in the fridge uh, exposed because they, from what I understand, onions take in a lot of toxins from the fridge. They suck in toxins. That's one of the reasons they're really good for you, right? When you eat them, um, they're sort of they got good things in there i guess i don't know what it is that they have they have phenomenal stuff but they also suck in tux toxins from your body so onions are phenomenal if they suck it in from the air they must suck it in from the body too right so let's throw this in and that's a fair bit of onions by the way right here let me show you right and it breaks down Eyes are a little watery. Give it a shake. Okay. And then we just throw this in. And we're gonna let this cook a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna leave it on three, let it sizzle. It's true, you remind me a little of Bob Ross right now without the fro. Yeah, I lost the fro a long time ago, man. A long time ago. Got any tips for cutting with a knife? I, I cook a lot, but it's always uh, a work hazard you know what um cooking with a knife don't do what i'm doing right now talking with someone and cutting at the same time you're not working in a restaurant okay you're not under the gun pressure you don't have a boss going where's my where's my chopped up stuff so when it comes to working in a knife working in the kitchen take your time slow down enjoy the cooking process 
Like I treat, I love cooking. For me, it's meditative. It re after a nice cook, man, I feel relaxed, right? Like toxins gone. I feel less stressed. So take your take your time. Enjoy the process. The other bit of advice: sharp knife. This should be a little bit sharper than what it is. One of the most dangerous things in the kitchen is a dull knife. You need a sharp knife. And the sharper it is, the better you should be at uh, at handling it. Okay. Finally, a Chicho cooking legendary <laughs> boss. Nice. <laughs> How are you doing? <sighs> Let me show you the lamp. Would love to hear the theory about how you found out about ASMR. Um, ASMR, I can tell you the story. Let me show you the lamp we got here. Okay. Check this out. This is the lamp. Now, they got pictures on our Discord page, Gab, Minds, and Twitter. Okay, take a look. Now, this thing, I put herbs in it and turmeric. So, there's garlic here, a whole bunch of herbs and stuff like this. Uh, turmeric. There is a little bit of. Uh, did I put some salt? I put it maybe that I guess smidgen of salt, not really any salt in this. Uh, turmeric, olive oil. Uh, balsamic vinegar and uh, rosemary a little bit of mint a little bit of uh, flower herbs that we grew over the summer and then I I basically the rest of this is red wine that I immersed in and soaked in it right so take a look at that now once the onions cook up a little bit here I'm gonna kick this up so you can hear it we get the sizzle going Once the onions cook up a little bit, I'm gonna give it a shake, let the water come out. I'm not gonna care, it's not gonna be caramelized onions, it's just gonna be cooked a little bit. And then I'm gonna put the lamb in there with the juice, and then we're gonna start layering stuff on top of the lamb, right? What are, th what are your thoughts on vegan diet? I'm not vegan. Uh, a vegan diet, for some people it's okay. Uh, everybody's different, everybody's different, okay? Uh, really like for me i need a little bit of meat i eat a lot of i used to eat a lot of beans and stuff but uh lately i haven't been eating too many beans uh just because i went a little crazy on it that's what i end up doing uh beans and walnuts and uh almonds and stuff like this so i go through periods where i'm eating a lot of beans i'm not eating a lot of beans a lot of a lot of nuts and stuff like this um but i haven't taken meat out of my diet for me it suits me I'm actually going to have some lamb tonight. Nice. Could I sub the sub the red wine for something non-alcoholic? Yeah, for sure. You can just use. Uh, you don't need as much as I put here with the red wine, and you don't even need red wine. You don't need even need alcohol, right? You could have. I could have uh, just kept the olive oil and balsamic vinegar and not included the red wine. If you go on our Discord page and uh, the pictures i shared on twitter gab and mine i showed you what the lamb looked like before i added the wine right so you could leave it the way it is and shake the stuff off on and wrote it rotated these last night right so everything gets nicely marinated okay cook them until the onions are uh translucent Tr to a certain degree to a certain degree but no more i promote a vegan diet for this recipe Hello, Chicho. Hope you are doing well. Uh, twice cooked pork. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome back, Dante. Veganism is healthy, but I can't do entirely without meat. Yeah, I'm with Dante. I can't do it. Right? There's periods, days where I go without meat for sure, but my body needs meat. Reading Doomsday Clock and watching Chicho cook. But <laughs> cook. No better Saturday. Nice every day. Awesome. Let's hear the story about Chicho finding about it more. Okay, let me catch up with the thing, and I'll once I'm doing a little chopping, I'll let you know. Okay, uh, lamb and mint sauce is incredible. Lamb and mint sauce is incredible, right? Uh, I try and rosemary sauce as well. I try to limit my uh, myself to eating just chicken and fish, and then supplement with vegan, uh, vegetarian options. I just hear they impact on the environmental farm and cows yeah the cows i beef i rarely eat beef tell the truth okay lamb is 
way more environmentally sustainable than beef by a long shot right so i stick with lamb uh, it's rare that i eat beef you're right you need to be selective that's for sure for sure for sure right okay let me show you what else we're going to put in here after we put the meat in i got some beets okay let me show you yeah. and these are organic uh, like half of the stuff half of the stuff um yeah about a third of the veggies here no actually half the veggies here a uh, third of it we bought from uh farmer's market we go to every saturday and another third was from a farm that local farm that we go to that we've bought stuff from the other ones are sort of generic veggies and stuff that we couldn't get locally uh, i think diversifying your uh, meats is better for the ecology balance than only eating one or two types probably regen uh, legendary uh, robot uh, beef though beef is very environmentally heavy uh, but lambs are young it's not fair. <laughs> short lives and slavery they should ever you know what the lambs that we're buying the bc lamb is free i don't know if they don't call it free range but free roaming i guess um so they're local lamb from the island like on vancouver island so they're from the island um so they live a healthy life and uh, if you go by what neil gaiman wrote in uh, the sandman comics when he was talking about uh we did the we did the reading right uh, for the first appearance of death in sandman number eight uh, you know death goes to you know she's doing her rounds and people are dying and she's collecting them up and she goes to a cradle baby's cradle and a little baby is able to talk to death and a little baby goes oh i just got here uh, is this all I get? And uh, and death turns to the little baby and says, "You get what everybody else gets—a lifetime, right?" So that might be a way to look at it. <laughs> this lamb lived a lifetime, and now it's finding itself to us, right? It's becoming immortal right now. <laughs> That's my justification. <laughs> I just had my some pickle bees. Pickle bees, nice. I think that is so yeah free roaming for two months of their short life when uh, it could have had six years well lamb is sheep is it not do she i thought sheep live longer than six years let's do a little shake up of this i try to eat chicken beef pork lamb goat rabbit rabbit i would like to eat rabbits uh, fish and bison bison I've tried so I'm not uh, damaging one of them too much nice they're for eating what doesn't matter <laughs> they're not for eating <laughs> yeah all animals on this planet were not put here for us to eat them right animals other species on this planet are here to live their lives as well right yeah I think about uh, I'm kicking up the temperature on this by the way okay a little bit i'm kicking up to six out of nine okay very selfish comment what did he say they're not for eating yeah i think about uh, that as well with lamb but i also believe that everything has a purpose if you can source selectively you can feel assured you're not harming the animals or environment yeah do you like that Where's the garlic chicha? The garlic's in here. I put in, in this guy, there's like uh, five chunks of garlic about, about this size, right? About I put about five of these guys chopped up into the lamb marinating, right? So the garlic is in there. They're for eating and for wool uh don't even start uh, comparing lamb with dog nice man he sure be cooking i can't respect that 100 i'm surprised you're not uh snacking on garlic. Uh, you know what i ate a lot of garlic the first week of this year right trying to 
get that uh, whatever virus was in me out of me right China thinks dogs are for eating do you have problem with that yeah to to each culture their own right as long as as far as I'm concerned uh, treat other species with respect treat the environment with respect and go at it F figure out what your diet what's best for your diet and uh, treat it that way right? we're gonna put beets in us after we put the meat in and potatoes right so I'm gonna chop up let's do two big potatoes for now I might do more uh, but I don't want to I don't want to fill this up with one type of veggie. I want to have all the veggies layered. I want to put a fair bit of different types of veggies in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, story about ASMR. Okay, Raz. Why are laughter eating and dogs not? Oh, you guys are talking away on that deal. I'm going to jump out of that conversation. Uh, let me tell you about ASMR, how I got into ASMR. Um, this was back in when was it uh, back in 2012 maybe 2000 and, yeah it would be 2012 2011 2012 and I was just surfing online and uh, I came across an article and I actually wrote about this I came across an article here let me find the article I wrote about this I'll link it up for you guys on chat I'm a sheep farmer if you're a sheep farmer how long do sheep live if lamb weren't for eating why are they so delicious <laughs> how long what's the lifespan of a sheep here check this out let me show you uh, link you up to an article I wrote ASMR if you go to the ASMR section here let me put on my glasses oh wow I got a lot of ASMR stuff so our community here we go okay here's an article I put out in 2013 right and I titled titled it for the ASMR community extended cuts of picking my beard all right so check this out and in this article I explain where I got how I got into ASMR right uh, I missed some chats so sorry about that but I'm gonna tell you the story and basically the story is this I um, I was surfing online you know if you can use kiwi in the cure you should be able to kiwi go into sausage um, so I was surfing online and I came across an article talking about ASMR. I had no idea what ASMR was. I was like, ASL, what? Right? So I read the article and in the article, uh, there were some videos posted on there. And one of the videos was someone tapping on a hardwood, um, hardcover book, right? And for me, I, I'm a twitcher. I'm, I, I like tapping and I love the tapping sound with nails and stuff and I was like oh, this is familiar like I know about this and they refer to it as ASMR right and I was like wait a second I've I put out a video like this like previous year a couple of years before that so I went to an ASMR forum and uh, I asked them if they thought what I had created, which was basically me, it was me in 2011, I believe, just combing my beard. I make beard videos, right? So I was combing my beard. And really the sensation of combing my beard when it was a full beard, like not to just a goatee, but full on beard like this, right? And the videos are up if you wanna see them. It's just me combing my beard uh, post and pre-shower, right? So wet hair and dry hair. Uh, it's amazing like that's one of the beautiful things about beards uh, just combing it and just the, the facial massage you get from having a beard right and I went to the community the forum and I asked them uh, you know would you consider this to be ASMR and if you would and if you do 
you know, I cut up short, shortened versions of me combing my beard because I didn't think anybody was into watching me comb my beard for an extended period, right? I just wanted to show what one of the greatest pleasures of having a gigantic beard is all about. And people in the community were like, oh my God, this, this is exactly what we want. It made it, it, it was on Reddit actually, the ASMR for, forum that I went to, and it made it to the top of Reddit on the ASMR community. At the time it was fairly small, right? And uh, I said, okay, sure. Uh, so I went back and I re-edited the videos and I made them like twice as long and I loaded them up and that's how I got into just ASMR. And then I was making math videos, obviously, uh, because that's my main gig, right? And there were a few people that came up to me uh, on the math channel, on the math videos and said, hey, Chicho, uh, can you please make ASMR math videos? Uh, because, and the reason they gave me, and it wasn't just one person, it was like a handful of people. Uh, and the reason they gave me was because they get anxiety trying to learn math. So I went, sure, I'll try my best. And the first set of ASMR math videos we put out were the trigonometry section uh, videos. And I specifically hit the trigonometry was because, uh, what do you call it? Trig is one place that really takes a lot of people out of the game, right? Uh, so I made the trigonometry ASMR videos and then from there it just grew to what it is now what we've been doing with food and games and everything. Okay, That's the story of how I got into ASMR. And huge thank you to the people that suggested I make ASMR math videos uh, because that, it, it, I really enjoy uh, making math videos on that level. And I do enjoy the graffiti style that we haven't done for a long time, going out into the into the city on walls and stuff but uh, that changed the game for me a little bit i i could do really extended versions of math lessons which i really love doing right? really love doing hey how's it going chicho mick how are you doing got any food uh, remedies to get rid of the uh ner nervous butterflies so excited for the ufc fight and oh really um food remedies to get rid of the butterflies shot of liqueur is not a bad idea right shot of liqueur usually gets rid of any butterflies for me anyway mcgregor you think mcgregor i watched the mcgregor and the russian guy mcgregor was a real not a nice guy man hey going to my friend's house to watch the prune who are you rooting for? Uh, you know what? I like the Irish. I love the Irish. But man, McGregor was the last fight I saw him. What a... He was not a nice guy, right? Reno, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho. By the way, I fall asleep to you. Your videos, best thing, getting my mind to settle on. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Reno, we're going we're gonna to start making... I'm going to start producing a lot more specifically ASMR videos. Uh, soon okay I know we've been on a live stream politics and uh, sort of benders but we're gonna get into some serious ASMR videos uh, especially loading them on YouTube and bitch and stuff I'm wearing my McGregor <laughs> walkout jersey <laughs> Habib mold him he was amazingly drunk was he was McGregor drunk I thought he was gonna be I thought it was a little tipsy we're gonna add the lamp to this Let's put this guy here. Take a look at this. So these things have been marinating since last night. There's a couple of, I got um, three lamb chops and I got two lamb shanks in here. Okay. I'm going to bring this up. Take a look. I'm not going to bring it over the computer because, so it's nicely marinated. Take a look. So we're gonna put this in here. I'm putting the lamb shanks in first. Shanks are amazing. Uh, if it comes to lamb, I love lamb shank the most. Okay. And lamb neck. I I went to the butcher. I was actually trying to get lamb neck, but they didn't have any lamb neck. Lamb neck 
Stu. My god. That is the way to go. And lamb shank. I usually get some lamb shank and lamb neck and I put it all together, right? So take a look at this. Here, before I pour the, this guy in there, the juices in there, we're gonna pull it, pour as well, right? So take a look. So I just layer it like this, right? What I'm gonna do now, take a look. We got the sauce, I'm gonna pour this on top. Actually, what I'm gonna do is, before I pour it on top, we're gonna layer, oops, lost the fork. I'm gonna layer the potatoes, okay. Usually you want to cook this a little bit. Should we cook it a little bit? Um, yeah, yeah, let's cook it up a little bit before we, oops, before we layer the potatoes and stuff. I'm going to leave it on six. I might pour the juices on top a little bit. Mixing. Have you actually tried it or are you just jumping on the hater bandwagon like everyone else? Da, da, da. Uh, missing whiskey. I would buy proper 12 just for display the whiskey 12 year whiskey mm. tastes like tractor fuel mcgregor's whiskey is a joke is it is it a joke i don't know what he drinks but 12 year old whiskey sounds amazing right to be fair i bought some proper 12 and for a three-year-old whiskey nice i love your fall of harbinger yeah fall of harbinger is so good i'm looking uh looking into buy buying some of the comics from uh the whole series which ones would you recommend uh the harbinger series um flex uh the original harbinger series from the 1990s fantastic right you have to buy it in a trade paperback because the single issues number one goes for crazy amounts right if it's in mint condition it's like over a thousand like it's very very hundreds of dollars right um but if you want to get a harbinger read to get a really good feel of the harbinger uh comic books the 2012 harbinger uh relaunch the 2012 series harbinger from valiant fantastic read that from there you can go in different directions from there once you read it's only 25 issues and there's a crossover with harbinger wars it crosses over with bloodshot and the bloodshot series is really good as well right so at some point you're gonna have to read some bloodshot comics as well but that stuff occurs in mid in the teens early teens in harbinger so the 2012 harbinger series start reading there after 25 issues you read that whole series if you want more recommendations from valiant pop into our discord and another live stream we do and i'll definitely point you in the direction that i loved going right if it's not made in scotland it's not whiskey bourbon is good right it's like champagne and cognac uh, not champagne uh, cognac and brandy right cognac and brandy are the same thing they just call it from the cognac region right uh like armenian brandy is pretty damn good man irish whiskey is decent jameson is irish i believe isn't it bourbon okay but mostly meh is jameson uh all spirits taste like Dante. <laughs> Jameson is pretty sweet. I think Jameson is Irish. Okay, we're gonna add this. We're gonna add the juices in there first. I dropped my fork, so I gotta pour that sucker out. Into the juices. Check it out. My fork's in there. So let's pour this in there. Yeah, let me do it this way so you see it in the camera. Right? Take a look. Look at all the goodies in there, right? We're gonna take all those things and put them in. Let me just put this here. Get rid of this fork. Empty the goodies in there. gonna leave this a six I'm gonna layer the potatoes here okay
layer some beets. Making lamb stew. Hello, Mr. Hezekiah. How are you doing? So we got some beets chopped up. We got some potatoes chopped up. And right now, I'm just going to layer things. Okay. And then we're going to close the lid on this. Let's close the lid on this and let it crackle. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you very much. I had some lamb shank last weekend. Mother made it with a spicy sauce and a bottle of red wine. Uh, little tipsy after devouring it was beautiful though yeah and one thing you can do with the lamb shank right now that I'm cooking up and I do this sometimes but we're not gonna do it you can take out the lamb okay put it in a just a glass container put some oil in the bottom and stuff and put it in the oven and broil it right it gives it that crispy feel to it right but I like it I like it falling apart in the stew personally okay I like it falling apart uh, in the stew. It's delicious. And for the winter, it's amazing, right? Really, lamb stew for the winter is absolutely fantastic. Now, the other thing I want to put in here is um, cabbages, right? And I have a red cabbage here, right, that we bought. Usually, I like putting red cabbage in, right? But we have some older... I guess you call it white cabbage that was sitting in the fridge. So what I need to do is I'm going to put this. I'm going to see how much it is because I'm going to have to cut some of the stuff out because it's gotten, you know, a little bit brown. So I'm going to shave off a little bit of it. All right. And then we're going to give it a wash and I'll see how much we end up salvaging. Uh, and I think it should be enough. Um, and what we'll do, we'll probably skip the red cabbage and just throw in the white cabbage. In there. Yeah. So let's bring this in. After chopping it up, I'm gonna give it a wash, okay? I made some sauce vibe uh, cookies, so sauce vibe cookies recently, and I'm still not sold on them. Uh, you just can't beat a crisp cookie. So so sauce? Is that, uh, do you mean like soft? Beat a crisp cookie, crisp, chewy on the inside, crispy on the outside. Okay, let's take off the first layer of this. Let's take off the second layer of this. There's something brilliant about cabbage, by the way. It lasts so long. Cookie in a warm bath. Warm bath. Pronounce sous vide backpack bags really sous vide wow. let's check this out well that's not bad get rid of that get rid of that and we need to get rid of this set too so take a look it's a little bit brown so we're just going to get rid of that And all of this goes to compost, of course, right? Just a container I have here for composting. Here, let's put this here for now. Let's get rid of this. super super soft it's all right it was more a test after I saw someone uh, I was trying wow I've never didn't even know you could do that with cookies yeah I wouldn't be into really s just squishy cookies need to be a little bit crispy Pers crispy on the outside chewy on the inside so good nice. so we're gonna cut up the cabbage here let me give this a look Nice. 
cabbage is amazing, of course, right? Let's put it in here. And I'm going to give it a little rinse. Venison to cook tonight. Ooh. You're gonna smoke the venison. I'm thinking of smoking it, really. Just give it a rinse, right? Bag is bagged full of bags. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> want this guy back here. <laughs> it's our bag bag. <laughs> I usually just season, uh, sear it off, wrap it in bacon, and smoke it with Jack Daniels barrel chips. Wow, that sounds amazing. That's the venison. That sounds really good. We got, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it crickling there a little bit? You can hear it for sure, right? But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna layer the cabbage in there, right? The cabbage is gonna give out a lot of water, which is good because this is gonna kick up. I'm not adding any water to this right now, right? I'm just drinking tea right now. I'm not hitting up the liqueurs right now. I'm recouping from, uh, from a cold or from a flu so when you're recouping uh, no alcohol it turns out pretty good I bet no venison. chef Chicho you gotta learn to eat well this is this is one thing I learned in uh, well no I've been cooking since I was really young I used to make my own eggs when I get up in elementary school wake up before people and make some fried eggs and stuff um, but one thing I learned, uh, mainly through an entheogens, uh, the information I got was eat healthy, eat well. You need to eat well in life, okay? Really, you need to eat well to be able to process information properly and to live without pain. And as few medical issues as you can, right? And food is your fuel, right? Food is the engine that drives this this physical body and your mind, your nervous system, everything about you, right? Your mood, everything about you. So uh, very important to eat well. And the best way to eat is to cook at home, without a doubt, right? So highly recommend learning how to cook at home. Extremely, extremely important. Extremely important. So let me show you what else we got here. I got some squash that we caught, you know, cut up before we used, we cooked it up before and we ate some and squash stays a long time. So I'm gonna put some squash in there too, okay? There's two different types of squash. Um, I forget what this is called. This is actually really good. It gives it a thickness to it. It's nice. So let's cut this up. I'm just going to cut up this part, compost that part. Not too much. I'm going to put that much of that one. And this one is really nice squash. I forget what this one is. I don't know the names, but this one's really good. And the seeds we cook up, they're really good seeds. just this much I'm gonna give them a little rinse and then cut them up and throw them in here okay I've collected some meats uh, 
for a barbecue I'm having with some friends tomorrow. We're smoking some steak over the wood from our Christmas. Oh, really? Looking for, oh, I'll give it a nice pine. Isn't it Christmas trees or pine? A lot of cooking is uh, reading and having the proper tools. Having the proper tools, ridiculously important. And uh, one of the things with cooking is this. Become familiar with some dishes and some types of food, right? Once you learn how to cook some base dishes that you can cook, then you can start experimenting and playing around and adding, removing. Sometimes you're gonna make duds. Sometimes some of the stuff you're gonna make is not gonna be good. That's a lesson learned. You know that this doesn't mix well with this and then you try something else, right? But learn two or three dishes well, right? Experiment with those a little bit, fine tune it to your liking and then start playing around with other things. Just like anything, cooking, just like anything, uh, you learn by doing. You know what, the skin of these ones, they do break down, but I'm gonna take this, yeah, I will take the skin of these ones off. The skin of this, this squash is a little bit rougher to eat. It should be okay, because we're gonna cook it for a long time, but might as well, we don't need. And the skin of this one is is breaks down really well, right? It's easy to eat, digest. So we're gonna keep this one. Orange veggies, orange veggies, very, very good for you. Any type of veggies that are orange are very good for you. They're underrated. Okay. I think it begins with fried eggs. It begins with fried eggs. <laughs> Boo. Eduardo. <laughs> Seriously, for me, it began with fried eggs. Right? Fried eggs are amazing. <laughs> Fried eggs is the way to go. I learned that early on. Right? Seriously. It fried eggs, one thing it does teach you is to uh, appreciate uh, how hot oil gets when you oil pans. So it makes you careful in the kitchen. You learn, you know, you end up burning yourself every now and then, so you end up, you know, not mixing water and oil together and stuff like this. So cooking fried eggs or boiling eggs or poaching eggs and stuff like this uh, you learn a lot from that tomatoes we're gonna add some tomatoes I'm gonna add, uh, let's add three tomatoes we're just gonna add three tomatoes I've already washed these okay and with tomatoes I usually take off this part of it the Right. the end of it or tail of it I don't know if that's the end or the tail yeah. just this part right. I know fried egg but they are not consistent yeah I'm, I'm pretty good with eggs soft boiled hard boiled fried stew is so easy to make because once we layer everything we really don't have to do anything right how 
how long will this simmer i'm going to be we're i've set up the stream for like three hours i'm gonna we're gonna cook this up i usually my stews take minimum of three hours to be ready to be eaten okay so i'm gonna try to cook it a little, a little higher temp for it to maybe get cooked a little bit earlier uh so i can show you what the how the meat breaks down but i like to cook these things a long time uh four hours five hours is is perfect right because everything needs to break down okay we're just gonna layer the tomatoes in there and some of the stuff like the cabbages is gonna give out liquid the tomatoes is gonna give out liquid so slowly what's gonna happen as things cook this stuff is gonna sink down and water is gonna come up so ideally you want the top to be you know all the veggies just to be to the top with liquid right. what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little salt right now i'm just using sea salt okay and you can add pepper i'm just not eating pepper right now i think i went a little too crazy on pepper for too long And the salt is going to help bring out more of the liquid, right? I'm going to leave it like that. ZW Money. Hope life has been treating you well, Chicho. Pretty good. Pretty good. 2020 started off crazy. Uh, just world events going on. I got sick for a couple of weeks. So I'm just getting back into uh, production mode high energy again and stuff i just drove by the chrysler building and they are advertising the ugliest truck i've ever seen chicho couldn't a pressure cooker increase that speed yeah for sure legendary bob ross the problem with the pressure cooker i can't add things as i'm cooking it right if i'm going to do pressure cooker i would have to put the onions the lamb in there um the beets and the and the potatoes in there and I used to and by the way you can add beans in this too right but beans I would cook in a pressure cooker um, you would add beans cook those in a pressure cooker and then all the veggie stuff you would add later on right so once that stuff is cooked you shake it up well you don't really shake it up you psh, put put it under cold water psh, let the pressure out open it up give it a mix and then you start layering all the veggies I'm just doing it in one shot right now like this right Instapot is amazing, or slow cooker is amazing too. When making liqueur, do you think I could use honey in uh, place of sugar? For sure. I think it would go well with lemons. Yeah, it would go amazing with lemons, right? Uh, the kicker with honey is it's a way more expensive, uh, especially if you're trying to get your hands on organic, on pasteurized honey. Uh, it becomes extremely expensive to make the liqueurs. But if you're not, you know, you're not going through a ballistic, right? Uh, why not use honey for sure it wouldn't go amazing with uh, lemon with any citrus it would go fantastic right. let's put in some more herbs got some green onions I'm gonna chop this up too I'm gonna throw the green onions on top okay got check this out now a lot of people don't use the beet tops the beet that you saw us put in we bought them from a farmer's market right so it was the beets and then these are the beet tops that were on top of it so i'm gonna chop these up and throw those in there okay but bordeaux i'm gonna chop these up and throw those in there with the green onions and i got some braising greens as well that i'm just gonna throw in there i just want some greens in there okay so this is uh kale right we got some other types of braising greens right so we just want some greens in there spot of tea how you doing how's life welcome to a stream i was hoping you pop in i know you like the cooking streams not so much the world event politics stuff that we do unfortunately the times call for it right but i'm glad you made it to the cooking stream we're gonna do more of these and we're gonna do more straight up asmr stuff there's a lot of chaos in the world so we might as well uh 
introduce a little love and a little chill. And, you know, get away from the news cycle. By the way, gang, if you want to watch an amazing feel good movie, 10 out of 10, fantastic. Trooper Zero. Okay. I think it just came out a few months ago um, or a few weeks ago. Trooper Zero. It is, it's got, it's beautiful. It's got a great message. It's endearing. It was inspirational. It makes you cry. It makes you laugh. It makes you giggle. Uh, you fall in love with all the characters. They're all like fantastic actors. Uh, you lose yourself in the story. Fantastic movie. Trooper Zero. Watch it. If you like feel good movies. Okay. Oh. Green onions. What's a menu, chef? Kiefer, we're making uh, lamb stew. Sort of borscht style, but I'm not really calling it borscht because it's not heavy cabbage and not heavy beets. It's just a mix of greens and vegetables and stuff like this. Yeah, the politics is, isn't really my thing, but I've just finished my first exam season in university. So you've uh, timed the stream. Well, nice spot of tea. Congrats on finishing your first exams at university. Must be a huge load off, eh? Jojo Rabbit is a funny film uh, out of the cinema. Now. Jojo Rabbit, uh, I hit my radar. I can't remember what it's about. And this is the beat tops, okay? And the beat tops, they don't really have a major flavor to them. It's just nutritious, right? Beat tops. sensation of finishing exams at university is fantastic right it you're you get into a you know people didn't like exam periods uh, exam weeks at university but I love them you were on your own time and you just did your own thing and put in multiple hours and marathon sessions of studying Jojo Rabbit is really good yeah Jojo Rabbit really okay cool I'll keep it in mind. First of all, you don't need to buy raw on pasteurized honey if you are putting it in the cure. Agreed, agreed. Legendary Rob Boss. The alcohol will just kill most of the uh, beneficial enzymes anyway. Oh, will it? I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. But I don't think you want honey that's made by. Um, corn syrup and stuff like this just straight up sugar that's not that's not good either beets leave leaves are great try uh clodic another polish soup clodic. i don't know that one Try not to bang it too much. You can get away with uh, pasteurized honey. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I'll start doing some. Uh, but if right now I'm only buying on pasteurized honey. I gotta get some pasteurized honey. Yeah, it's very stressful. I do like how with exams you go in and do a solid two hours and then it's over. Yeah, and the and the steady sessions before the exams, right? Like. Just immersing yourself for eight hours or 10 hours into one course and just studying that content, listening to music and just the environment of studying is, I, I like that. I don't know if I could do it now. I liked it at the time when I did it. I don't know, you know, for me, I, I spent 10 hours editing video sort of on the same level, uh, but it's just the mindset you get into and you're totally focused on the topic at hand especially when things click man that is amazing especially when things click when it comes to physics or mathematics or whatever it might be
It's phenomenal, right? Braising greens, braising greens, just a handful, not much. We don't want it. To, I don't want the 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 stew to be extremely green tasting, right? I just want the nutrients in there and the fiber, of course, right? And when I'm making stew, I usually try to use up uh, any veggies and stuff that are just in the in the fridge that need to be used up. Function like that. You can't function like that multiple hours. I love it personally. Really enjoy it. The longest study session I ever did at university. I studied ten days. 10 to 14 hours a day for this one math exam that we had. It was a math course that I took. It was uh, applied mathematics systems of uh, is calculus systems of differential equations and integration and multiple. It was crazy. I couldn't I couldn't do it now. Like it really it was like, whoa. and you needed linear algebra. And I took this course without having the prerequisite. I didn't have the linear algebra course, right? So I had to grab a linear algebra book. For five days, I learned, taught myself linear algebra. And then I studied the content for the course itself. And wow, that was like a four and a half hour exam. After three hours, the prof was like, anybody need more time? Everyone was like, more time, more time, more time. It really, it was crazy. 10 to 14 hours a day, 10 days. And I had another exam after. I had another exam after that exam. I didn't even bother studying for the other exam, right? I just studied for the math one. For the other exam, it was uh, economic geology. And what I ended up doing was just an hour, half an hour before the test, I grabbed the textbook and memorized the table of contents. And it, it was all essays. So just and table of contents, if you have a book that has a phenomenal table of contents, the table of contents is your train of thought of the book, right? So as long as you, if you attended the classes and you sat there and listened, and that's all I did, as long as you read the table of contents, you understand how the data's information is being linked up. I just memorized that and wrote essay, another three hours of essays for that course. I ended up just barely passing the math one. I only answered 70% 70 70 of the exam, but I passed it, half the class failed, I passed it, and I ended up getting like 90% on the other one with, that I didn't even study, right? Hey Chicho, how are you? Hello, the Three Stooges, how are you doing? Uh, like our former president, George W. Bush said, where's the beef, where's the beef? The beef's at the, there's no beef here, but there's a lamb at the bottom of this, of this pot. Okay. I love that sound. Nice. I'm surprised it's not steaming yet. I got this eight out of nine. It's not steaming yet. All right? Should be. Hopefully. We're gonna add more things. What are we gonna add? What else we got? Peppers. Here, let me do a little cleanup here. Move things around a little bit. Make some room for ourselves. Okay. Let me show you the last two things we're gonna throw in there. I got just some regular mushrooms that you buy, the white mushrooms, I guess. Got some shiitake mushrooms that we bought from the farmers market. Local shiitake mushrooms, fantastic. We end up today if we weren't doing a cooking stream i was going to be at the farmer's market it's every saturday and i was going to grab some more shiitake mushrooms but we're doing a cooking stream right so we're going to put in some shiitake mushrooms as well and we're going to put in some peppers red orange and yellow i don't use green peppers anymore green peppers are tough on the tummy okay so we're just going to use half of each one of these I was actually going to put a little squash in there too. Not squash, uh, zucchini in there too, but uh, they're in the fridge. I might put some zucchini in here as well. Okay. I wish I had time to cook like this. Yeah, I personally make time for myself. And I've washed these already, by the way. So wash your veggies. 
Chicho, how do you even remember that? I remember nothing from university. It was such a waste of time. Half the courses were a waste of time, right? Waste of time. You learn nothing there, but uh, how to appease teachers and how to learn the answers to a question. How is this thing? Uh, Bixi, I can't disagree with you, but I will, okay? University really depends on what you're taking, right? Like for me, I took, I, I majored in geophysics, minored in mathematics. And what I had to do was, and I personally couldn't believe it with the rest of the people. Chicho, I tells you, it's a new year and another year older. I'm fine and dandy. Nice, the three stooges. Um, now, when I was in this program, I was in the air science department doing geophysics with a minor in mathematics, right? And you know, you have electives that you take and whatnot, right? For me, all my electives, almost all my electives were mathematics because I wanted to get a math minor. For most, almost all of the other students uh, that were in my program, their electives were the easiest courses they could take. And I remember having a conversation with some of them. I was like, dude, you're paying for this course. You're at university to study, to learn. Why are you taking the easiest thing you can take? You know, I remember a couple of them took like what was called Wednesday night at the movies. Their course was from the arts department. All they had to do was go watch a movie and talk about it. Meanwhile, I was taking systems of differential equations and stuff like this. And they're like, oh, Chicho, you know, we want to get a good mark and stuff like that. I go, why do you want to get a good mark? What are you talking about? Who's, who's watching over you? Well, they're like, oh, we want to go to get a master's degree, postdoc degree or whatever it is. We need good marks. I go, look, it, you're paying for this. Might as well learn something useful. And none of these people, ooh, dangerous, none of these people were taking hard courses. So it really depends. Long story. It really depends how you treat life right sure about half the courses that took university were garbage right were useless let actually let me rephrase about a third of the courses i took at university were garbage about a third of them i thought they were useless and then after the fact i realized uh, there were important courses to take right and a third of the courses i really wanted and they were fantastic okay so I don't know what the ratio is for other people or what other programs. Uh, for me, you know, it costs a lot of money. Third of your cost of university, your basically useless courses. You know, if it's costing you thirty thousand dollars to go to university, ten thousand dollars of it was useless courses, right? But you need that piece of paper, or I needed it anyway to be able to do geophysics. Okay, you need. I needed a geophysics degree to be able to do geophysics. And since I was there, uh, I made sure I at least got a math minor. And I was the first person, I don't know if anyone's ever done it again, but since I did it, but I was the first person from the earth science department at the university I was in with a geophysics major to get a minor in mathematics. And I was proud of that. I worked my ass off for that. I'm studying psychology at the moment. A lot of it is creative and challenge, challenging students to do research and do uh, do think for themselves because there are no certainties in the subject I think it does depend on the course you take it does depend on the course you take big time big time I'm gonna put more green pep uh, more peppers in here I want more color in this okay I would definitely take that uh, movie cards you had Wardle awesome <laughs> I was thinking that Chat pause due to scroll. Oh, chat pause is just things. Just yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If I'm paying for it, I had to take student loans. I was I was a poor student. Like, really, sometimes I had to needed a hundred dollar emergency loan to be able to eat. I'm not gonna pay multiple hundreds of dollars to take Monday night at the movies or Wednesday night at the movies, right? Um, you know, it's just. That didn't make sense to me especially 
you know, when you're borrowing money to go to university. Yes, I agree. But you took classes that interested you and eventually got uh, you somewhere. I wasted years, but now I'm f finally wiser. Yeah. And by the way, it wasn't all classes. I remember talking, going to professors and, and stuff saying, listen, can I just substitute this course for something else? I know I'm not going to petrology. Like I wasn't going to go into that stuff. They're like, nope, you need to take it. You have to take it. Right? I was like, man, uh, I had to. I remember one course here. Check this out. I'll tell you the way I treated things, right? I was in a lab, right? And it was... Uh, and by the way, I'm going to be making ASMR videos of this thing. I'm about to tell you, right? It was a course where we we're talking about minerals and geology, right? The different types of crystals and stuff. And petrology was super interesting where you're looking at the microscope. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, cells of... Uh, what? No, you're going to call it slides of uh, light going through... Uh, olivine and different types of rocks and uh, minerals and crystals and stuff amazing like visually whoa talk about it trippy right but one thing we had to do in the lab was memorize all the formulas so i went up to the lab and she was an amazing lady one of the best teachers i've ever had right and she was a lab the person who organized the lab she didn't have her phd but she was in charge of the lab and the geology department right and i went up to her i said i forget her name she was a fantastic lady right and i went up to her and said listen i i'm not going to memorize these names can we like not memorize this stuff like this is useless for me anyway can i do something else a project or something like she goes no you have to memorize this i said look it's i'm not going to do it it's like it takes me forever to memorize names let alone formulas and stuff she goes look chicho i understand you're not going to go into this and she knew this but it's part of the curriculum and you have to do it right it's part of the exam i go look i'm going to go into the exam i'm going to get this i'm not going to do any of this and i'm just going to answer the other stuff she goes then do that i go okay so when the test came the final test came about a third of the exam was formulas writing down the formulas for these minerals we're going to make an asmr video of this i still have the cards of that stuff right so when that came, I just said on the sheets of paper, I said, I refuse to memorize formulas. I refuse to memorize from, I, I think it was like three or four pages. Refuse to memorize formulas, cross them out, the whole pages. And then I filled in the rest, right? I passed the course and that's what I wanted, right? So be really selective on where you spend a lot of time in universities. Like manage your time properly. I'm going to see uh 1917 in the movie theaters tonight i can't wait yes I, I actually read the description for it the two soldiers that are sent behind enemy lines to deliver a message we have a movie society here that does essentially that but i can't imagine it being course yeah like i couldn't i couldn't believe they were paying a few hundred dollars to take this course i got my undergraduate the at the average uk university than a master's at a top uk university and i noticed a big difference in courses and content yeah birdie uh and uh what do you call it masters and phd are a different beast right i knew a lot of people that were getting their masters and phds um it's a different beast like for me for my bachelors i actually had to write a thesis Right? I took a honors co-op bachelor's geophysics degree where we actually had to write a thesis. And my thesis was published, by the way, in, uh, in SAGI, the largest geophysics conference in the world in California that they ho hold in California. I think it's still in California. And I was invited to go speak as a bachelor's thesis, <laughs> bachelor's graduate. I was invited to go speak at this conference. Um, but I didn't go. I had to finish my thesis and stuff like this. And I was working with a company uh, testing out their software for a new program. And one of their representatives went. And that's when I realized what it was like working for a company. It was just basically, they just 
they're basically there to sell their products. So my work basically became a promo for their software, which I wasn't really too keen on. I got my undergraduate. Here. Oh yeah, that one. Cool. Nice. I've caught up with the chat. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We need mushrooms on top of this. I'm gonna put a little bit of more mushrooms, and then we're gonna put the shiitakes on there. Right. Just the white mushrooms. And once you do a little prep, like it took me about, you know, an hour. I had to clean up the kitchen for the live stream and stuff. So I did a couple of hours of work in the morning just to set ourselves up with the cameras and whatnot. And just washing the greens and the veggies and whatnot, right? So let's say an hour of prep time for the veggies, cleaning the veggies. And whatever time right now we're spending to cook the stew and that's all it takes and once you cook this you got this thing going for like three days you're eating we might even make some rice but i have some nice sourdough here so this would be amazing with just sourdough right we need the steam let's see i'm gonna go when you're doing this what i end up doing when i hear stew yummy yeah got her what what i end up doing i usually put a just to see what it's like down there, right? I go down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the steam coming up. All right? Nice. Take a look. And that's the color that we get for the stew. The the juices. All right? That looks great. All right? And I usually just scrape the bottom just to make sure nothing's burning at the bottom. Got me hungry now. I'm gonna go stick a pizza in the oven. <laughs> University life, right? Now I just shook this up a little bit and you can see it had already sank down, right? Just lift it up, let it readjust a little. Now we can layer on the mushrooms. And then we're gonna put the shiitakes on top. Oh, I was gonna get the zucchinis out too. We're gonna to put zucchinis in this as well. Let's put this on top. That's looking delicious, yeah. Who is your favorite chess player? Oh, I don't know the names. I, uh, I've watched the Bobby Fischer movies. So I have a, I do have sort of a uh, like for Bobby Fischer because mainly of his politics, right? Because of the chaos he created in the, in the whole uh, community, right? But he was crazy. <laughs> he did go crazy, of course, right? Where's the meat in the bottom? Yeah, we need some zucchinis in this. We need some zucchinis in this. I gotta give these a wash. We'll put a couple of zucchinis. That's it. Now, one thing I don't usually put in the stews is carrots, okay? Carrots give out a really strong flavor in the stew, so I don't put carrots in the stews. Uh, I don't like that heavy carrot flavor in the stews carrot amazing in chicken soup not so much in stews and i don't put celery celery gives a strong flavor too celery fantastic in chicken soup not in stews okay let's wash these guys up Oh, 
Nice. Shiitakes, shiitakes. Let's throw the shiitakes in there as well. The shiitakes are amazing. Shiitake mushrooms are the bomb. Like, look at this stuff. Like these things are so good, so good. Let me show you. Take a look. Shiitakes. Should we leave them whole? Uh, should we put them in whole? Yeah, let's put them in whole. vegetables outside the kitchen uh do i store outside the kitchen no that's our fridge back here it's just a fridge is in that room it's just the design of this house which i really like actually because uh, when we're sitting the living room is an open kitchen when we're here when the fridge is uh, makes humming sounds and stuff you just close the door and you don't hear the fridge making sounds right These zucchinis I should have actually put further down, right? In the pot. But I forgot to bring them out. So this is what we do. Is that enough? We'll cook it, cut up a little bit more. Yeah, with the fridge is really good actually. Some people's homes I've been into and of other homes I've lived in, the fridge, some of them is just, it just makes crazy sound, constant humming uh, in your space, right? So we put one and a half zucchinis in there, right? We got this much left over. We put a couple of uh, couple of uh, potatoes, three beets, uh, some cabbage. Thank you very much for the bits, Connor. Appreciate it. <laughs> right now, we're basically done. It's a waiting game for us now, right? So how long did it take? It's like 1.30 right now. We start around 12.15. So about an hour and 15 minutes. We've chopped up everything. We got the thing cooking, sit simmering, right? Curcoling, right? So fantastic. Have been live for one hour and 29 minutes. Nice. Spot of tea, awesome. I forgot to resub, so just did. Nice, awesome. Thanks, Connor. Appreciate it. Now I'm thinking about uh, repositioning my fridge. Yeah, I highly recommend. I never even uh, thought about it, right? And then once you live in a space where you don't have a fridge going, just kicking in. Wow, right? Yeah, for sure I use uh, garlic, silonet, uh, but I've marinated uh, the lamb in garlic. So I used, um, we have pictures on our Discord and Gab Mines and Twitch that I loaded up. So I put about, I used up about um, four or five of these for marinating the lamb, right? And with wine and olive oil and uh, balsamic vinegar and all of that with the herbs mixed in there, the juice went into this stew. So there is a garlic base to it. Right? And there's green onions here and onions in here as well, right? You hear your fridge right now? Yeah, like for me, 
I don't hear it, right? Amazing. Amazing. Right? Yes. Let's give it another dig in there again. There's a piece of meat. Check that out. Right. And this is needs to cook, so I'm gonna push the meat down further. Right. And you can see, let me show you. So the liquid is up to here right now. Right? You can see the liquid coming in. So the liquid is about three quarters of the way into the pot. And I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to this. And you know what? I'm going to put some mint in there as well. Bro, bro jar. Some of that stew and <laughs> ship it to me. <laughs> I'll pay. <laughs> oh, fun. Let's put some salt in there. And remember these jars of mint, right? We dried these and jarred them up, right? This is the stuff from spring 2019 so it was early year mint from last year right and we have a whole bunch of jars this year or last year 2019 i jarred up a lot of mint right so all i'm going to do is just sprinkle some mint on top right? just take a handful of mint right? and just break it up I, I love mint, so I use up a lot of mint. Okay. I don't know how many jars we've gone through. We might be okay uh, for this year as well. Uh, if I get the time, I might dry more mint, but we have tons of mint. It should last us for at least another year. And lamb and mint is fantastic, right? So. Let's put one more. And it's something else when you have your own dried mint, right? You spent the time to dry it up. And you can tell we have other herbs that we've dried back there. Let's throw this in there. Nice. How long will the stew last you? Uh, for Actually, we might have some people. No, no, they're not coming over for dinner. Um, they're going to go somewhere else. But uh, for two of us, this will last at least three days. Three days, I would say. Right? So cook for one day, eat for three. That's one thing I learned at university. Right? Cook one day, eat for a few days. Usually at university, what we ended up doing was... Um, on Saturdays, I would go buy everything I needed, right? On Sundays, not during the winter, but during fall and spring, uh, one of the things we ended up doing was, uh, and especially when I was working, I was doing co-op programs, stuff like this, uh, we'd go do barbecues in the, uh, on Sunday. So barbecue, ton of vegetables, and, and I'll show you guys what... The, what the type of barbecue I do. So you make something that's a, sort of a Russian dish, I guess it's called ikra, but Iranians have it, Armenians have it, Eastern Europeans have it. So you barbecue a whole bunch of vegetables, cut them all up together, and you barbecue some meat. So on Sunday, we do a lot of barbecue, spend the day outside barbecuing, playing games and stuff like this. And you were, we were eating barbecue stuff for until Wednesday or Thursday, right? And then you have a couple of days of break, you just eat simple food, and then Sunday you do again, right? Good advice, I should adopt. I want to learn to cook properly at some point. Uh, spot of tea, highly, highly recommend. Thank you for the tier one sub, Connor. I just saw it coming in. Appreciate it. Okay. But fantastic. Like, one of the best things I've ever done in my life is learn how to cook learn to deal with food right extremely important yes
Now when you're doing this, make sure you hit the bottom with the with this guy, with the spoon. So you know, you sort of go on the bottom, make sure nothing's sticking, you're not burning this thing, okay? And when you do that, the curling will stop, like, and it'll pick up again slowly. So you're bringing up the liquid that's hot in the bottom, more coming up, and things settle down, right? So you're helping it cook faster. Nice, this is looking great. And it is sort of borscht style, right? Cool. Now we're done with all the cutting and everything. So we don't need this anymore. Let me just put this guy here. Cool. Nice. Yeah, let's put this guy here. Arrange things. And the rest of it is just a waiting game, right? Which is fantastic. Cooking really isn't that hard. You just need to get motivated and understand the flavors of herbs properly. Yeah. And only learn initially if you're learning, just learn three or four herbs. Salt, pepper, learn those. Learn the flavor of mint, rosemary, okay, turmeric. Turmeric could be considered a little bit more advanced. You don't need very much turmeric. Turmeric is amazing for the tummy is an anti-inflammatory and stuff so a lot of these herbs are actually medicinal they're they're important for you to stay healthy both physically mentally emotionally right what do you typically eat at lunch um it varies like i would eat in general lunch is my heaviest meal at night time i'm usually just snacking and in the morning i eat fruits and yogurt and a uh, little bit of cereal or bread and cheese and honey and jams and stuff like this or eggs right during lunchtime mid-afternoon i eat my heaviest and at nighttime i'm snacking that's it i don't i try to not to eat heavy at night uh, okay i'll probably start with pasta and stuff because i know uh that's uh reasonably easy yeah yeah Pasta, rice, rice is amazing. Julian Assange works for the Russian government. No, he doesn't. <laughs> you, you watch too much CNN or Fox News if you think that. <laughs> I use lemon in cooking more than any other. Yeah, lemon is really good. Thyme is, thyme is amazing. Thyme is, seriously, thyme is really good. There's a few different herbs. Like, what do we got? Basil? Like, all right, the leaves. I could put one of these in here. Let's put one of these in here. Why not? A couple of these. Three of these. Right. Let's put three of these guys in here. That's all you do. And mix it in there. It'll give a flavor. Uh, the smell of it. And this is stuff that we dried ourselves. I remember your vid on YouTube. Loved your math and politics videos. Awesome. Rez Wez, how are you doing? Welcome to our Twitch channel. I've heard Nunia is a pretty good herb to use and stew. I don't know what that is. Nunia. Basil is my favorite. Nunia. I don't know what Nunia is. Nunia. I love rosemary. Rosemary in stews is absolutely phenomenal, right? We can actually turn off this camera here. Uh, that one? Yeah, we can turn off this camera. Right? Because we're done with this one. Nunia business. Nunia business, I don't know what that is. Got them. Okay, I gotta check this out. What is this? Y'all actually five what? Let me check what this is. Doop. What is this guy? Doop. 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. 
none of your short and blunt way of saying none of your bi- <laughs> none of your business <laughs> none of your business <laughs> that is funny <laughs> it's a pun that's funny none of your business none of your business <laughs> Reswes. that's awesome that's funny <laughs> none of your business <laughs> cute cute by the way here let me show you this this is the last two of the sort of persimmons we had that were ripening these ones aren't going to ripen as nice uh, but these big big things persimmon or persimmon these things when they become really squishy oh my god you can only get them during in season but they taste phenomenal it's word joke yeah <laughs> legendary raw i just I, it's some of this word puns and urban dictionary stuff and whatnot man th th gotta stay on top we gotta keep on what is that mean? what does that mean none of your business none of your business none of your business herb <laughs> nice that's exactly what we want look at this thing circling away get the mushrooms in there get the zucchini in there to get the juices in All right. yes should we cook up some rice too should we do Rice is easy to cook up. I can cook up some rice. You really have to have a lot of time, time for cooking. <laughs> There's so much internet lore you have to catch up on. Yeah, huge, huge. And you do need some time to be able to cook, right? I am craving some munchies. I might have some cake. Should I have some cake? Chocolate cake. Mm. <laughs> we had a birthday here recently. So we had some chocolate cake. I'm gonna bring out some chocolate cake and cut it up and eat it. I need some energy. Yeah, it's Chicho. Just in time for ASMR. Nice. You one f nine twenty. When is a su oh, when a stew sounds like that? You know it would be delightful. Yeah. show you the cake let me show you the cake cake okay, we don't need this we don't need this let's put this guy here should we turn on this camera here's a box with cake <laughs> oh here let me show it to you yeah oh legendary rob boss for sure Make our own bone broth, 100%. Uh, bought bone broth, garbage. Uh, we'll make our own bone broth. Uh, and usually it's uh, uh, chicken, chicken bone broth. Okay. I'm just gonna have a little piece of cake. <laughs> you gotta eat healthy. <laughs> cake is part of the deal. Right? Here, let me show you. There you go. Oh. It's like chocolate raspberry. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a little piece. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut it, but I'm not gonna eat it for another like 10 minutes or so because it's chocolate and it was sitting in the fridge. So you need the, cho the chocolate to reach room temperature. All right. And let's have a little chocolate cake. Just, just a little chocolate cake. <laughs> you treat yourself sometimes. You do, you do. I'm gonna put 
put some more blackberry jam on top of it. Take a look. Looking good, looking good. Raspberry chocolate cake. Okay, let's put this guy back in the fridge. <laughs> and this is uh, our own blackberry jam, right? So I'm going to put this here. I'm gonna wait a little bit. It's gotta reach room temperature. I could put it in the toaster and heat it up a little bit, but I will refrain from that. So. Right. Let's check out the stew. Is that a butter based or cream cheese based? It's a butter based, not a cream cheese based. It's from a local pastry. I wouldn't grab that. Actually, I wouldn't grab that yesterday morning. We, we've eaten half of it yesterday. <laughs> and it has a little bit of icing. In your opinion, who is the father of ASMR, Chicho? Uh, who is the father of ASMR? Alan Watts, maybe? Bob Ross, some people say. Uh, I love listening to Terrence McKenna. Terrence McKenna with just brilliant sound. Uh, Alan Watts, you know, I'm pretty sure the father of ASMR was someone many, many, many centuries ago, right? <laughs> or millennia ago. Father of ASMR, maybe shaman that used to tell stories uh, to the tribe sitting around the fire, right? back with my chicken and bacon pizza mm, that actually sounds good from the supermarket mm, that doesn't sound so good no nowhere near as impressive as that stew <laughs> it pizza is easy to make a spot of tea all you need all you need if you like thin crust anyway go get yourself flat bread from like a middle eastern uh, what do you call it middle eastern uh, grocery store right like pita bread or something and make some kind of sauce, put it on the bottom, right, with tomato paste or whatnot, and uh, just put things on top and put it in the toaster, right? And we've been, ASMR seems to be a grooming response. Oh, great point, Dante. Grooming the monkeys, right? And we've been doing that for millions of years. Oh, I never even thought about that. I never even thought about that. Very good point. That combing the hair, right? M massage, uh, back back rubs and stuff like this. And again, monkeys picking off things from other monkeys. Do you buy meat from the butcher or supermarket? Um, this one, butcher. I try to go butcher. Uh, it's rare that I buy from a supermarket where it's all packaged up. It's, it's rare. Uh, usually is from a butcher. Okay. I'm gonna eat cow guts. Mm. I guess. Uh, the there's a dish that we make which is uh, hooves, tongue, uh, and just different parts that have a lot of gelatin in them, and you cook those up, and uh, it is amazing. Very powerful food. Barb Ross for sure. Alan Watts was a bit too loud. And abrasive compared to the low soft voice of yeah legend but alan watts does have videos out there where it's very chill like there's one i remember him sitting in a garden and he's got a little bell and it goes -ling, da -ling, da -ling. hello everyone da -ling. isn't today a beautiful day right it's da -ling. And he starts talking about philosophy and stuff. It's super cool. At the time when I was watching them, we never really called them ASMR. It wasn't, we didn't realize, like, I didn't know there was a thing ASMR, right? 
flatbread works best i like i like flatbread for pizza and there is a recipe that we do have a family recipe where um, we make our own dough and open up the dough and lay it on top and oh i haven't made one of those forever uh, maybe maybe we do i'm gonna get the recipe from my mom and we make pizza okay i'm still waiting to see you cook and eat a cow intestines on stream um intestines we didn't we don't do the recipe that we have we have hooves we have tongue we have uh, what else we have some of the other body parts but i haven't had one of those for a long time just because uh, the food supply is tainted right so i have to make sure i'm getting it from a local farm that's grass-fed cows and um, you know the animals have been treated fairly and stuff like this and I trust the trust the farm uh, there are butchers here that we do have that provide that but again it's hard to get your hands on it like yesterday or day before when I went to get the meat uh, I was looking for cow, uh, lamb neck but they were all out like you have to special order it and the lamb they get it comes in every two weeks and they butcher it that's what it's called butchering it and cutting it up right um, so it's what you can get right I come from a family of bakers as well so I should definitely learn oh spot of tea if you're it's in your DNA it's in your culture uh, learn how to bake baking is a different beast and at some point we're gonna do some baking oh yeah look at that that's what we're talking about I'm gonna turn down the temperature on this pretty sure but let's do this here here's the shank take a look nice yeah. take a look at the shank and i know this isn't cooked enough yet because the meat is just not coming off when i'm doing this right i like it when it comes off so we're gonna do this just shake it up a little bit that way the bottom stuff comes up top all right especially the onions and stuff gets mixed in yes. here's the other shank sticking out right and again right the meat's not coming off when I do this on the shank take a look here let me show it to you that way you know take a look when I'm doing this the meat's not coming off I want to cook this to a point where I do this and the meat comes off right so I'm just gonna close this And I'm going to turn the temperature down on this a little bit. I'm kicking it down to a four. Okay. Yep, I understand. It's important to factor ecology impacts in your purchasing decisions. That's become even more important now since world population is so high. Yeah, yeah, legendary Bob. That's one of the main things that I've done uh, with my diet, food intake for the last. I started probably around 20 years ago uh, 18 years ago or so but in 2000 about 18 years ago I started really looking into local food local sources eating much healthier cooking a lot more at home and stuff like this it's just the way it is right let's add some blackberry sauce to this or blackberry jam and we made this right we've got a live stream of us making these And this is fantastic, the blackberry sauce here, I'll show it to you. Oh, here I got a spoon right here. Take a look. Alright. <laughs> this is so fantastic. <laughs> every every few weeks I crack open one of these jars and we go through it. But it's super good. Like yeah man. Mm -hmm. and it's something when 
you've picked the blackberries you've made the jam you know exactly what's in here how long it took you to do it right. and we're going to take some of this and we're going to pour it on top of this <laughs> nice that looks great that should be plenty that should be plenty i'm going to lick this Oh yeah, very good, very good, very good. If you guys were here for the live streams, you would have, you know what this looked like, the blackberries, right? And we posted pictures, take a look. All right, let me show you here. Eduardo auto mod zapped your thing. I want to say this for some reason is reminding me of Randy Master into cooking shows. What? What's who's Randy and why are they doing that? When picking blackberries, should one be aware of the location there? Yeah, Matthew, for sure. Don't pick blackberries near major roadways, highways, and stuff. Cause the oh, right. from South Park. I can't, I've seen all the South Park episodes. I can't remember that one. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember that one. Uh, but bla picking blackberries for sure. Uh, there's a location we go to. It's a side road, dead end road that goes to a private sort of, not a private beach, but an area where very, just the locals know it's a beach, right? So there isn't high traffic there. So for sure, don't go picking blackberries near a highway and stuff. It's the soil is contaminated right i was told not to eat from roadside uh brambles as they are contaminated by atmospheric pollution. yeah for sure matthew these ones it's it's like right beside fruit trees and stuff like so the traffic there is minimal minimal right it's the cream uh fresh episode is it <laughs> i can't remember it Randy <laughs> he's got his farm going on now right he's got his farm going on living the 420 life oh so good oh my god so good last yesterday when we finished eating half the cake we're like oh my god we should have eaten it with blackberry sauce <laughs> with our blackberry jam this is so good Take a look. Oh my god, look at this falling apart. Look at that. Nice. The farm music thing almost gets me. I can't believe it's all. Like the season's already over. No, no, no. They, no, no. Yeah, the season is already over, I think. Yeah, this is really good. I like five seasons behind on South Park. Need to catch up. Yeah. There was one year I was like a few seasons behind, so I did a marathon. For a number of weeks, I was watching with South Park. It was awesome. Look at this. Nice. A little whipped cream on this, oh, oh, bliss, bliss. I hope you guys are having fantastic food right now. Neophyte, it's it's amazing. 
like I, I I can't downplay it it's really really good right really really good look at this thing ah, it's gurgling away so this is borscht style right the tomatoes are breaking up the beets need cooking a little bit more the meat obviously needs cooking more but pretty soon what I'm gonna do is uh, taste it right taste the sauce on it anyway oh what is the drink that goes with that I had to drink tea gotta drink tea with cake I like tea This is cooled down a little bit, so I'm pouring it out. And usually you want hot tea. Love the string, the music is perfect. Right? This is sort of uh, not strong tea. Okay. I've been drinking it since this morning. Love the string, the music is perfect. Called it. Nice <laughs> spot of tea. Hot tea, nice. More cake, more cake. Like that. I might need more blackberry uh, jam on this. If I could only share again. We need a little bit more blackberry on here. Blackberry sauce. Dessert before. Dessert before is <laughs> dude. Like, like. Nice. Oh yeah. The one thing that eating dessert in restaurants, it really sucks, is they don't give you enough sauce. If you order cake and stuff, they you know they have a big piece of cake and on the side of it they put a little bit of sauce here a little bit of sauce there it's like dude you give me a gigantic cake with a little bit of sauce give me more sauce right make me so jealous with all that awesome food it's taken me a while to learn all this spot of tea right i i spent a lot of time in the kitchen trying to learn how to cook right and how to bake i all, i know how to bake as well right Very good. Mm -hmm. Eduardo, I agree. Is technology going to reach a point where we can taste food, uh, feel, sensation, right? When it does, that's that's it. It's a game changer. Say hello to another level, right? How's the liqueurs coming along? Liqueurs are good, Riot. I haven't been drinking for the last few weeks. Oh, actually, not true. For New Year's Eve, I took a whole bunch of liqueurs to uh, sort of a function, a gathering we were at, and people loved them. Like, they drank it all. And there's a picture I put up where I showed you guys f five different liqueurs I took, uh, 250 mil liqueurs I took to a Christmas, uh, to a New Year's party. All of it got, <laughs> all of it got drunk. <laughs> it's finished, right? So I haven't, I haven't drank any liqueur for the last three weeks. Uh, since New Year's Eve, but uh, they're good, super tasty. Wow, wow, wow! One person said uh, they really liked uh, pineapple liqueur. For me, it's, uh, God, it's, I love them all. So, mm. very nice. I might need to have to go get myself some uh, whipping cream. Or go get some cream and make whipping cream at home. Yes, it's time to make some. Yeah, you know what? I plundered the liqueur cabinet a little bit, but luckily I make a fair bit. So 
the most popular i'm not sure which one was the most popular i had one person tell me they loved the pineapple that shit was the people's house we were in so the person was like i love the pineapple the pineapple is amazing right uh but that person tried all of them as well and i, I basically put them in the kitchen <laughs> like put them in the kitchen i put a little note there was ice there you know 100 percent vodka like so people because it, you can't taste the vodka really it's it's not you can't you know if you take a shot of vodka you know it's vodka but this one you could have just drank the whole thing and without knowing it was 100 percent vodka so we put a little note saying 100 percent vodka right so i made myself a couple of drinks or or two drinks one for me one for someone else and you know when our talk with people socialize a little bit came back and half the bottle <laughs> bottles were gone made ourselves a couple more drinks <laughs> went away came back and i was almost gone and then made one more little bit for for ourselves for with uh, on the rocks and that was it they were done and then i put a little note there saying you can eat the fruit too <laughs> right they were really good i like the cornini cherry a lot to tell you the truth the cornini cherry cherry the blackberry liqueur is fantastic the lemon is amazing really they're they're really good this is super good wow 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 addictive addictive i could use another one but no more cake later let's finish this off and we can try some of the sauce for the stew need a spoon for this if I didn't have a goatee I'd lick it but you can't lick things when you get a goatee well you could it's just gonna be messy well that was well worth it was well worth it what is that capu 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 i don't know what that is what is that emote let's put the blackberry in the fridge the cake would actually uh, go fantastic with uh, the crab apple sauce as well that we made <laughs> wasn't the bag bag behind you <laughs> bags <laughs> it's full of bags <laughs> it's bags you gotta recycle them right or not recycle uh, not recycle but reuse them right as much as we can anyway okay everyone dinner at chicho's but you seriously we got a lot of stew here right fantastic super delicious all right let's do a little mix nice this is good my glasses off steam in the sucker yeah still cooking more the meat's not coming off the the bone right and it's not breaking apart but i can't taste the uh, what do you call it the liquid here the, right so we're gonna do a little taste test I'm guessing I'm gonna add some salt to it. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna let it cook. Bunging bag. Bunging <laughs> no. Are you violent when uh, uh, when you kitchen when you cook? 
No. No, I'm pretty chill. I use uh, I use cooking to relax, really. That sound as well. Yeah, the sound. Yeah. We like it. Let's check this out. That's the squash. All right. Cooked away. Goodies in there. Nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little salt on this because I'm going to add more salt on that. I'm just going to mix it up. But one thing I don't do, I don't make my foods too salty just in case there are people who don't like uh, very salty flavor, right? So I take it to a level where I think the, that should be the base that brings up the flavor. And more salt if people want, they add, right? Good evening, Chicho. Loki, how are you doing? Good evening, people. Good evening, good evening. So good. So good. I'm gonna show you this. Oh yeah, let's add the salt. That's good. Let me show you the bread we got. Sourdough bread. The bread is from the same bakery that I got the cake from. Yeah. Yeah. Nice sourdough. Really nice, sharp uh, bread cutter. Very nice. A good test for a stew is take a little bit of sourdough or different rye bread is really good, and dip it into the into the juices. Oh yeah, very good. That's the world's sharpest knife. No, I think the Japanese hold the hold the record for the world's sharpest knives, right? This is very good. Mm. Delicious. Now, this is one thing you have to watch out for. I'm going to show you this. When you're adding meat with bone into a stew, okay, be careful eating it because take a look at this. That's a bone, right? Sharp bone. Here, let me bring it up. Take a look. Just imagine biting into this thing hard. You have to be careful. All right, take a look. Here, Ooh, hold on. Take a look. 
that's like a tooth right like that's crazy right look how sharp that is be careful eating stews that have meat in them that have bone the bone gives the stew an amazing flavor right especially if there's bone marrow in there and stuff right but when you're eating stew be careful warning given right like this thing just imagine biting oh my god that would be super crazy painful it's just the nature of the beast right no i mean literally amazon no, no is that what it is is that what it's called I gotta put on my glasses. <laughs> Loki's laughing. I gotta click on that link. Hold on, I gotta check this out. Spotty. <laughs> We're all sharp as night. Is it? <laughs> it is too. <laughs> Literally. I think this is it. That is too funny. Surgical, surgical. <laughs> awesome spot of tea. <laughs> You're picking this stuff sharp, man. That's fantastic. Cool. How in the world did you recognize it? That's fun. Okay, I'm gonna cut one more piece here because we might have more. I'm gonna put the rest of this in the bag. I think we're gonna have a little bit of more of the stew. I have another bread here too and this is really good as well and this would go amazing with this as well it's like seedy like multiple multi-grain bread really good okay. Bra brazilian secretary of culture uh gone by now made a video with reference to a global oh i heard about that i think i couldn't find a video actually i couldn't find a video eduardo uh, global speech I think it's uh, getting ridiculous is it just to avoid attention on other things I mean it falls under normal fascist strategies uh, Eduardo uh, South America is uh, there's a lot of turmoil there it's gonna continue for a while but I've been following a little bit well more than a little bit uh, there's some crazy people in power right the resource wars are huge uh, the power grab is huge the land is vast and, and it's being funded from outside of South America in a big way I well hopefully it doesn't get any more crazy hopefully in a few days there's some serious protests planned for in Brazil and Chile right Some of the juices actually we didn't mix it up after we added the salt so let's mix it up and Fascists are not very smart. Often they can't help showing their true colors. Yeah, that's the kicker. Like they're coming out straight out saying, "Oh, we're fascists." <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what are you guys crazy? <laughs> Is this your secret recipe? I don't know if a uh, secret recipe. No, it's not secret because I'm sharing it. So definitely not my secret recipe, right? Putin roaster. Uh, and stews are. There's got to be a gazillion different stew recipes out there, right? I don't think the minister was thinking anyone would find out <laughs> making a video and putting it out there. <laughs> Not very intelligent, right? And I think they don't, they don't fear. Once, when, when they're in power, they don't fear people finding out. 
because they're willing to go to such extreme measures to maintain, retain control. Look at what's going on in Bolivia. Like, really, stormtroopers walking around cities right now trying to instill fear in the population. It's just crazy to me. Crazy. I wish everyone would just make some lamb stew and chill the F out, right? Nice. And you let the bread soak, right? Very good. Gonna add more salt to this. A little bit more here. Because we have a lot of veggies and greens and tomatoes and whatnot. Usually veggies and stuff they take a fair bit of salt just to bring the flavor out. And you can see how much is sunk down, right? We were on top here, really, on the rim. Now it's totally shrunken down, which is great. The potatoes have totally disintegrated. Like here's a couple of chunks of potatoes. That's what happens. These are russet potatoes, so they disintegrate some of the other potatoes don't but russet is usually it's pretty cheap to do uh to get it needs coriander possibly coriander is fantastic but right now the flavor of this is really good i'm not going to mess with it aside from salt i'm not going to mess with it So good. More bread. <laughs> Very good. And again, this will feed us. Let me take a look at this. Feed, feed two people minimum for three days, right? And at the end of this, it's winter time. And you get a nice hearty meal. And, you know, you eat a bowl of this with some bread, or you might cook up some uh, rice and stuff like this. Nutritious, and you can't get something like this in restaurants, really. Look at all the stuff that we put in there, right? I think I might head off for today to play some games with my friends. Awesome, really glad to catch the stream today. Hopefully, be back for another stream too. Awesome, Spot of Tea. Thank you for popping in, by the way. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm going to do more of these cooking streams and comic book and gaming streams and stuff like this, right? Uh, sort of step away from some of the more heavier topics that we've been doing. Just because we've got things sorted out. And this is what's really needed in the world, right? Sharing food together, cooking together, having a nice conversation. Enjoy the game, Spot of Tea. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Nice. I hope you have a fantastic time. So we're at this. We've been at this for how long now? Doop. Two and a half hours. Our timing was pretty good. I'm going to, we're definitely going to keep on going, or at least for another half an hour, or however long it takes, for you to see how the meat falls apart, right? Is this a typical Northern American dish? Um, I don't know if it's a Northern American dish. This is typical, like I know this because Armenian, Persian background, but Armenian really would make this. Um, is it, like, is this traditional way that my mom and grandma and family makes it? The base is the same, right? Usually, and Persian dishes, 
usually it's like this you fry up a lot of the stews the persian stew dishes or masabzi fesenjun and all these things right and armenian too you take onions you chop up onions fry them up not too heavy you're not caramelizing them right you're making them someone mentioned translucent i guess so you fry them up in a plate and then you put meat in there either chopped up meat a lot of the stews and stuff they don't put chunks of lamb the way i did they take uh, usually lamb uh, i know in iran is mainly lamb seldom beef right but you can use beef as well or whatever it is you want to use even chicken chicken doesn't require uh, cooking as much right so you can put a chunk in there chunk of meat in there the way we did it like a shank couple of shanks and stuff or you can cut up the meat have it uh, stewing beef like chunks and then you fry up the onions after they're cooked a little bit and then you put the meat on there with your uh, turmeric garlic um, whatever else herbs you want to put in there right you fry up the meat you cook the meat well right so you fry up the onions you cook the meat so you don't do it usually the way you start layering on top right away you cook up the onions and the meat together so the meat is cooked right and then you transfer stuff to a new pot and then you start layering some of the other stuff in there right and cooking them up together sometimes you cook them for an extended period of time sometimes not so much there's one dish that i cook that i haven't cooked for a while now is um a badun, badunjan khoresh is persian dish and it's eggplants so you take the meat and stuff and you layer eggplants the way we did and you put the onions and, put it, and you cook it in sections like everything's partitioned in section you cook it up and then you take it into a, a casserole dish and you put the meat and the green peppers and tomatoes separately and then you cook it up in the oven for like 45 minutes uh, half an hour to an hour around that period and you cook it in there and it's amazing it's an amazing dish eggplant is phenomenal right eggplant you could uh, you know there's a saying that you could make a thousand and one dishes with eggplants uh, i think they call them night eggplant is a nightshade have you ever baked your own bread yeah long time ago it's so good yeah i haven't done for a long time our family we used to make uh, i gotta bring out the recipes I would, I, let me rephrase it wasn't me that was cooking the bread i was helping out family i was sort of apprenticing so i was helping out during the bread making process i've never done it myself solo uh so maybe that's one thing we'll do hi chicho any big plans for 2020 a dwarf uh, keep on making this content brother or sister of course right uh, but big plans yeah roll out a few things we got approved uh, by the way on the same day or within a day where YouTube took down one of our videos where we were sharing our sources of news information and they uh, I contested it and they reinstated it I think the day after the day before we got approved for YouTube uh, subscription service like for people to just like twitch where you know they join for five dollars a month or something like that i haven't rolled that out yet so i want to roll that out right hopefully at some point uh, i do want to start making some of the math content the text for it right and start putting the mathematics together put the modules together so there's a lot of stuff that i want to roll out regarding this content uh, and look into do a lot of asmr math in regards to the comic book stuff and the cooking stuff and start taking a look at a little bit of mathematics of the cooking uh, so everything really is centered around what we're doing here uh, those are my big plans those are those those have been my big plans for the last 15 years which is what i've been doing right nice block spot currently reading through it awesome fish car potato england blue five awesome i'm glad you like labor of love and that's a third iteration of my website uh, i have a lot of stuff on archive.org on the previous website we had i wrote a lot there too a 
cover everything, right? Share what I love. And what I think is important in life, right? We should have some cake after this. <laughs> it is sour though. Adorf. Super good. This this sourdough from this bakery is one of the best sourdoughs I've ever had. And I'm a huge sourdough lover, right? Uh, so just lucky came across a bakery fairly close to us, walking distance, where it's amazing sourdough. Like luck of the draw, right? It's the bread that I eat the most, without a doubt. And sourdough with butter and honey, oh my god. Toast it up, oh my god, so good, so good. The little this is hot now, so let's do this. Bring our holder. Oh, these shiitake is gonna be tasting so good, look at this. These are gonna taste amazing, look at this thing. Right? Look at that. Shiitake mushrooms. Let's have a shiitake. This one looks to be ready. Okay, where is the shank? Let's bring out the shank, see if the meat's coming off. <clears throat> oh, almost there, almost there. Take a look, take a look. Let's put this guy here. Let's see. Take a look with the fork. Right? See it just coming off? Right? This part still needs to be cooked a little bit, but it's not bad. Take a look. Here's a chunk of the meat. Let's bring that out. Right. That's how it tastes of the meat. Right. Still needs to cook a little bit. Right. We want it to fall apart easier. Oops. Because once this happens, once the meat starts falling apart, the bone marrow in the bones is getting into the juices of the stew and that's what you want as well all right let's taste uh let's taste the meat oh yeah mm -hmm. very good oh yeah it just falls apart very good let's see what the shiitake is like Very yummy. Very yummy indeed. The texture of shiitake mushrooms is, is phenomenal. And shiitake mushrooms, I believe they have a... Uh, they have a lot of goodness in them for, for us. Mm. Very yummy. So now that the meat's almost falling apart, it's, it's done, you could eat it now. But I'm gonna cook it down to, kick it down to low. I'm kicking it down to two out of nine on the, on the temperature. And I'm gonna let it simmer for at least another hour before having a nice, sitting down and having a nice bowl with sourdough right 
And while that's going on, I'm just going to do some cleanup, put the extra vegetables away and whatnot. And there isn't that much cleanup, right? We already cooked all the, uh, prepped all the vegetables and cut them all up and put them in here. So there's like a handful of dishes that I need to put away and uh, just put the veggies in the fridge and let the simmer. Hassle-free, three days of eating lamb stew. Life is pretty damn sweet, right? That looks so delicious, Chicho. How's life? Olive, how are you doing? How is life? Hope you're staying warm. Brr. I heard it's really cold up there, right? I heard it's really cold. By the way, Olive, last week uh, you mentioned uh, about Julian Assange. You wanted to know how to get involved and stuff like this. I found a, a YouTube channel or the channel that the people that I mentioned that they're starting to do live streams regarding Julian Assange and stuff like this. And I posted it on Discord. So let me grab it for you. Uh, let me grab it for you. Because uh, that's pretty important. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Action. It's called add. Their channel is called Action for Assange. So let me click this. Hopefully, we won't lose the channel. Here we go. Okay. They, they just started recently. They only have 1,500 subscribers and stuff like this. But this is their channel. Uh, they do share good information. I've popped into their live streams every now and again. Okay. A few times, actually and they do have conversations so uh, you can follow their channel as well and they talk about some of the things that are going on i know you were asking about what was going on with assange and whatnot so i thought uh, i'd pass on this info to you okay i was hoping you'd pop by actually oh thanks i'll be sure to check it out awesome and they do live streams there there's like a group of them sometimes they bring in really important guests that they're talking to right there's basically four four five four core people and there's other people that come in and it's nice just to turn it on and listen to it and uh, i don't agree with everything they say i don't agree with anybody I, everything they say <laughs> i don't even agree with my own philosophy over time right but uh it's nice to tune into and listen to the conversations and the information that they're sharing right and uh, they're uh, on the younger side so there's a certain amount of passion there right which is motivation uh, which is important to have and you don't have to be younger to have that passion but uh, there's a lot of older people that I listen to that have that passion as well uh, but this one is a unique perspective they're starting out and they have good intentions okay they have good intentions fine aside from that gang I think we should call the stream the stew's cooking away Look at the juice here. I mean, can we even call this borscht? I don't know if I would call this borscht. Borscht is usually with beef as well, right? So the juices is amazing. Take a look. Fantastic. You can see the herbs in there, the greens in there, right? We got beet tops in there. And lots of different types of herbs and greens, right? Tomatoes, zucchini, mushrooms, beets. Uh, braising greens squash <laughs> right all the goodness there is um, so that's good that's cooked up I'm happy about that uh, tomorrow at 8 30 p.m. Pacific time my time uh, we're gonna do a live stream current events live stream okay so if you want to talk about current events tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m. Uh, sorry to everyone from Europe, it's going to be pretty late for you guys or early morning for you guys. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, but I think that sort of works. I haven't done a late or late evening stream for a while, so I thought I'd put one during that time. All of passion is needed in heaps for Assange these days. Good to hear that some people out there care. Agreed, Olive. Agreed. And that is one of the most important things regarding uh, helping out Assange is the passion that's needed. Uh, just because there's so much stuff going on, uh, Assange has been put on the back burner. Uh, mainstream media, corporate propaganda, they don't even cover him at all. Uh, but he's been put on the back burner by a lot of people because lots of things going on. And he needs to be on the forefront, I think, uh, in my opinion, anyway. And we will be doing Assange streams uh, 
uh, soonish rather than later as soon as I get the last two previous uh, uh, Assange WikiLeaks live streams we did on YouTube I just have to do the reading for uh, um, the OPCW DOMA files that were released right um, aside from that ending with that talking about Julian Assange uh, thanks for being here everyone I hope you enjoyed I hope you do lots of amazing amazing cooking lots of amazing eating share food with uh, people you love and people you care about and uh, enjoy life and appreciate the bounty that we have right uh, I think it's pretty important uh, for our physical health for our mental health for our emotional health okay um, aside from that if you can make it tomorrow evening at 8 30 p.m current events live streams we'll talk about whatever is going on in the world and whatever you guys want to talk about and later on in a few days I'm gonna announce some more live streams that we're gonna be doing later on in the week and most likely next weekend possibly but later on in this week uh, we're gonna do more live streams and hopefully I'll be loading up a few videos on YouTube and bit shoot and get back into the motion of it now that I'm feeling a lot better being taken out for a couple of weeks okay uh, thanks again for being here gang thank you for the conversation and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow if you can make it. Bye for now.